Why Government Debt is a Human Rights Issue Systemic oppression and global injustice show up in different ways, but perhaps the most underexposed way is in relation to government debt. Let's shine a light on it, right here, right now. Government debt is money borrowed by a government from a multilateral creditor, bilateral creditor, or private creditor. If used well, it can increase a country's financial resources to invest in things like healthcare, social security, education, and housing, and ultimately stimulate and strengthen the economy. But the sustainability of the debt depends on the terms and conditions of the loan, and these vary tremendously depending on who's borrowing and who's lending. You see, these terms and conditions are governed by an unjust, fragmented and asymmetrical global debt system. And coded into the system are complex forces that are not always easy to see, but that work in favor of the rich and powerful. These forces include the ongoing legacy of colonialism and its distortion of colonized countries' economies, the growing power of private creditors who hold a significant amount of global south debt and whose loans are generally very expensive. Irresponsible lending for wasteful and even corrupt projects. This harms the population of the borrowing country while politically or financially benefiting foreign creditors and local elites. Power imbalances and global economic governance arrangements that were created almost 80 years ago with the representation of global South countries largely unchanged since then. And of course, unequal financial markets that are heavily skewed in favor of powerful lenders, which leave low- and middle-income countries with far less power. These are seen as less creditworthy and end up having to borrow at higher interest rates and in foreign currencies. And when the exchange rates change, their debt can increase dramatically. When countries struggle to service their near-impossible-to-repay debts, they're forced to renegotiate the loan, often with conditions that are even more difficult to meet. The result? They squeeze their budgets to try to service this debt. And where do you think the spending cuts begin? With important public services such as healthcare, social security, education and housing, the very things borrowing should improve. And who suffers the most? Ordinary citizens suffer when we don't have quality public services, reliable infrastructure and a robust safety net. The most affected are the already marginalized groups. Women, children, the poorest of the poor. And now with the climate crisis growing, this burden of debt makes it even tougher for these groups, worsening the emergency for us all. So while government debt may not seem like it at first, it is a human rights issue. And recognizing it as a human rights issue flowing from international treaties, national constitutions and other legislation helps to expose its true cost, identify its real victims and restructure the distorted global debt system at the center of the injustice. As legal obligations, human rights call for compliance with binding rules and accountability when those rules are broken, both for borrowers and lenders. This gives us a tool, a sort of code cracker, we might say, to demand that all governments guarantee all human rights, not just the rights of the rich and powerful and how they participate within the system. Find out more, engage and participate at www.cesr.org.